Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today I am looking at my ALH TDI VW engine here, my 1.9 liter. All those terms just mean the exact same thing. Here we are, here it is. I have it halfway stripped down. Quick recap, I picked it up off of someone else using it for their Ford Ranger swap. And it sat for a while and supposedly it's got 80,000 miles on it or something, which I believe if you look in here, you can still see the cross hatching. I might not have torn it down other than I wanna upgrade the rods first, 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 because I plan to boost this thing really hard. So this very minute, I don't have a single solvent on the shelf, so I can't actually do the reassembly because I have no way of cleaning everything, but for at least right now, before I run and get some brake clean or isopropyl alcohol, I'm gonna finish taking off a few more knickknacks and then we're gonna pull the rods and pistons out in preparation for putting the new rods on and reinserting everything. <laughs> off we go. Just take a look too at how nicely hatched these still are. Quite nice. Okay, well, second things first here. I'm trying to get this coolant hose off. Turns out this is a seven millimeter. Turns out I have it. Hopefully it doesn't strip. It didn't strip, that's awesome. And then I think, cause this is new car style, it'll just pull out over there. It's quite the chonker for a coolant hose. Oh. Oh, holy cow. That's insane how tight that was in there. Had to hammer it out. You know what they say, work harder, not smarter. A clapped O-ring, that's what we're dealing with. Okay, that's fine. Well, I'm pretty satiated with that. I am going to clean, I think, prime and paint the engine block, but it's gonna be silver which is what I like, it's black as beat. But I think this can be repainted silver too, that's fine, so I'm just gonna leave that on. And all of this will end up being silver, totally fine. So let's go ahead and flip, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull these the oil pan back off, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull our pistons out. Well, it's another day, another dollar, and I came out here to test my piston sizing, and my bore sizing, and plasti gauge and stuff, and I don't have a micrometer that's the right size. So, for now, we're just gonna get stuff nice and clean, 
and we'll circle back to the whole measuring and checking engine stuff. <laughs> Okay, well, I started doing this, uh, and my intent kind of behind this project, and I feel like this probably happens to more people than just me, which is why I feel like it's worth talking about for, like, a few minutes, just, like, quick time out, is I, like, tore down this engine. I mean, some people, the guy who had it previously was just going to use it, so that's always an interesting dynamic, right? So he was just going to put it in the truck, not open it up, and just run it. Uh, you know, I don't think he was going to change the timing belt, nothing. And then I tore it down because I want to upgrade the rods, because that's a common weak point. And I'm definitely experiencing project creep, is what I would say. I bought the rods and I was all like, oh, I'm just going to throw them in, fucking throw it back together. But now that I have it apart, you know, I'm looking at some of these bearings and like one or two of them are looking a little kind of ambery or just they're showing where... And then what really gets me too is just the generally how the pistons look. Like, there's a lot of this, like, I don't want to say crud, but crud or soot or whatever you want to say built up around the crowns of the pistons here. And there's definitely nothing crazy, but like some real light scuffs on the sides. And I'm just not sure where to draw the line on this one. I think new rod bearings is an easy clap, and I'm going to do that. I think since it's a part, I'm gonna go ahead and plastic gauge my crankshaft, the main bearings, before replacing them. Check how those are. Uh, and then I think I'm also just gonna thoroughly check everything else. Uh, I don't have the right micrometer is what I realized. I thought I was gonna check bore sizes today and I can't because I don't have the right size micrometer. But I wanna check these pistons for roundness uh, and I'm gonna check my cylinder bores for roundness and taper and make sure all that's within spec before putting it back together. But you can see this rapidly expanded from being like, I am going to take the engine apart, switch the rods and put it back together to like, holy cow, you know, this piston looks dirty. Does it, does it even need attention? I mean, it was running supposedly, but it's like, here we are, we're doing it. Uh, how, how far is it worth to go? For me personally, it's tough to say because on the one hand, I see this engine even if it was subpar as an upgrade. Uh, on the other hand, I feel like I've had better looking pistons than this. Not, I mean, they're not like scratched or scuffed real bad, but they're just really crusty come out of my other engines. So I'm a little bit torn and it is already a part, so it does beg the question, like, should I just do it now and have a really bomber TDI motor? Uh, so there's definitely some creep there. And then as I'm, of course, as I'm reading threads on different things, I'm seeing oil pump upgrades and other things like that kind of jump out. And I'm like, shit, how far in do we really want to go? And it's not cheap, you know, I think like a new set of pistons, if you get the same ones as these, so uh, there's two types of TDI pistons. These are the non-oil galleyed. There's no additional oil cooling under there. They're like 360 or something, and then you can get the oil galleyed ones for like 600-ish? I don't know, it's expensive. Kind of feeling that process out. I think my next step is just to get the micrometer and actually measure everything and kind of take good notes of where I'm currently at and that way I can have a good look at where this engine is at and understand what I actually need to go and upgrade. But certain things, again, these pistons just freak me out. I don't even know. I'm not sure how to clean this like residue off even. You know, like this is brake cleaner and like zero change. It's still there. It's all still there. I feel like this part of engine build videos often gets glossed over because it's just some guy sitting down with his brand new motor and he's putting brand new pistons and brand new everything in it and it's just like an assembly video and he talks about checking clearances real quick and like that's it. I'm in the middle of this engine right now and I would say everything is very unclear until I get better measurements and kind of consider my options and consider my priorities. And I think it's important to share that for other people who end up doing engine rebuilds that aren't, you know, 10, 20, $30,000 engine rebuilds. I'm trying to do one, it's a thousand dollar engine. I was hoping to be into it, maybe 500 bucks more than that. But it looks like could be easily a $2,000 rebuild or a $3,000 rebuild, depending on how sandy you get. 
So that's definitely interesting and just wanted to share. My other fun fact is, is I was checking piston size of my calipers, slash you can also just read it off the piston, is when the guy sold it to me, he said it was rebuilt, but we're on our first piston size still. And we have the OG oil pan sealant, so I think for sure this is just an OEM Volkswagen motor through and through. I don't think it's been opened or touched by anybody else really until now. So that's where we're at with it. So in light of my own kind of uh, debacle here with what to do and how much and when, I want to spend some time in these videos devoted to not just how do you do things, but also what do you do? How do you know what to do based on what you're starting with? And we'll go from there. So once I get my micrometer in, then I will be checking how this engine looks. Assuming the engine looks good, then I will move forward with ordering parts for it and decide what parts I'm going to replace. If for some reason it's not good, then that'll suck. But <laughs> at any rate, that's where we're at. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day out there. Please like and subscribe. I will be going through the rest of this build in detail as it comes.